Good morning. Welcome back to Methods. Hope you're having a fabulous day. Week one, lesson three. Let's do this. So today we're going to look at the ambiguous case of the sign rule. So page six and seven. Um, last lesson we looked, well, we introduced the sign rule, which recap was the sine length a divided by the sine of the corresponding angle a is the same as the sine length b divided by the sine of the corresponding angle capital b so what is the ambiguous case so let's have a read so when we are given two side lengths so we know two side lengths of a triangle and we know an acute angle so remember acute angle are angles which are less than 90 degrees which are opposite one of these known sides then there are two possible triangles which we can draw how is this possible well let's consider how for the following scenario so so far we have only dealt with triangles where all the angles are acute but it is also possible to draw triangles with obtuse angles. So remember, obtuse angles are angles between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Um, this is known as the ambiguous case of the sine rule. So for example, consider triangle ABC, where side length A is 12. So if in this triangle this is angle a then the side length a is the side which is opposite that angle so that is 12 um, side c is 8 so that's going to be opposite the angle c so that side here is 8 and angle c is 35 degrees so let's solve for the unknown angle a so using sine rule Default formula A on sine A is B on sine B. Uh, so A is 12 on sine A is 8 on sine 35 degrees. I'm going to cross multiply. So 8 sine A is 12 sine 35 degrees. Uh, so sine of A is 12 sine 35 degrees divided by 8. Um, and so A is sine inverse of that number, that fraction. So using a calculator, A is approximately 59.36 degrees. So that makes sense. In our diagram here, this angle A does look to be less than 90 degrees to join up the three sides of a triangle. So we've calculated this acute angle A to be 59.36 degrees. Now, this is where the second, the ambiguous case is possible. However, there is also an obtuse angle triangle which can be drawn from this given information. Well, what is it? Namely, if I'm given a side, uh, sorry, angle C is 35 degrees and we know the side length of 12 and we know that the opposite side length is 8, technically, if I wanted to, I could also construct this triangle which this side length is 8. I also keep my side length of 12 and I keep my angle 35 degrees. But this new angle A prime is not acute anymore. It's not less than 90 degrees. It's more than 90 degrees. Um, and in fact, this obtuse angle can be calculated by 180 degrees minus the angle we have just, the acute angle we have calculated. So we substitute our previous answer. So A prime, this ambiguous case, the second possible angle of angle A is 180 degrees minus 59.8, uh, sorry, 36, that's my previous answer. So that is approximately 120.64 degrees. So just constructing this second possible case where I'm still having a side length of 12 and I'm still having a side length of 8 and I'm still having that C angle of 35 degrees, but now I have a second case of the A angle, 
which is obtuse, so it's more than 90 degrees, so it's 120.64 degrees. So you got to always check for the ambiguous case. Is it possible to have the obtuse case of 180 degrees minus the uh, acute angle? So if we use a calculator to work out sine inverse, we always do get that acute angle. So when do we check or when do we know we have an ambiguous case to work to look for? Well, for the ambiguous case to be applicable, the following conditions must be met. The given angle must be acute. So this starting angle, 35 degrees, needs to be an acute angle. If your starting angle is more than 90 degrees, then there won't be an ambiguous case. The adjacent side must be bigger than the opposite side. So you're thinking, well, the adjacent side here is 12. Opposite is 8. 12 is bigger than 8. So that we could have an uh, ambiguous case. The opposite side must be bigger than the adjacent side times the side of the given angle here, the 35 degrees. So when we're using the sign rule to calculate the missing angle, it can be useful to first identify whether ambiguous case is applicable to the problem or not. But in any case, in your exam, always, always, always check for the ambiguous case when you're using the sign rule because you could have two possible answers.